السلام علیکم پروگرام پرسپیکٹیو اینڈ آئی ایم یور ہوسٹ غلام نبی مورائی ویئرس وی ڈسکس ان ڈیتھ دی سبجیکٹ فرام ویریس پرسپیکٹیو ان دس پروگرام ایز یو ویل این انٹیلیکچوئل اے رائٹر سید مغلہ شاہ صاحب از وتھ اس شاہ صاحب السلام علیکم شاہ صاحب ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از نیو ورلڈ آرڈر اینڈ مائی فرسٹ کوشچن از واٹ از مینڈ بائی ورلڈ آرڈر and how has it changed? Thank you, Murai Shah. Uh, that is uh, a very important topic, very important subject. And uh, generally, uh, it's uh, something which is being talked about. Uh, many uh, ideas, many questions uh, are there, but uh, how this art, new world order is going to shape up, we'll talk about it. Uh, but let us first see, as you, for your first part of your question is, what is a word order? And I think uh, we can tell, explain this to the viewers, and from there on, we s see how it has been changing uh, over time. Now, when we talk about a world order, what we are saying is that there should be, or uh, there has been an arrangement a system of relationships between nations, between countries for the purpose of keeping political stability in the region or in the world. So, how to keep a political stability? What kind of an arrangement? What kind of a system should exist or has been existing as your question says how it has changed. At different times, different kind of world orders existed. And then they ch kept changing from one world order to another to another. And then ultimately we will talk about what is today's position of the, what kind of a new world order is shaping up. There is the first question that we uh, ask ourselves is, what are the factors which influence this world order that how why does it change from one setup one arrangement one system to another system another arrangement that generally there are three factors historically as we see and we'll be talking about these which affect the the shaping up of a world order and the changing of world order the one is that the economic factors and second is the military uh, or the strategic uh, uh, factor and third is the cultural factor. These three uh, have a major impact on um, creating a world order or a regional order as we are talking about a few centuries back, then uh, the, the communication systems, let us say 500 years ago or a thousand years ago, the, the communication systems were very slow and the networking was generally limited to various regions. It was not worldwide. Now, of course, the communication systems have been very fast, the technologies are there, and the interconnection is not just regional, interconnection is worldwide. So, there were regional arrangements or regional orders, which if we go back into the centuries. Now we can start this, can go back as far as we like, but let's begin how the medieval world changed into the modern world. What was the world order as the world was changing about 500 years ago from medieval to modern? And this change did not happen in one year or in 10 years. It happened slowly over centuries. We'll be talking about that also. But if we look at the, uh, the medieval world, that's about 500 years ago. But for, you know, for a thousand years or so, up to, say, about 15th century, 16th century, about that time, 
Asia was the center of the world and Asian powers, the world order was shaped by Asian powers and by Muslim powers. Europe at that time had become weak. America did not exist as a country and uh, in Africa also there was nothing comparable to what was happening in Asia. This was the center of the world, Asia. And at that time, one well, of course was the China, which had its own in the regional order it had. And which means the, 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 the Chinese power or the Chinese empire was influencing the events of countries around it. Then second was the Muslim power from uh, Baghdad, from the, uh, the, the Usmania Khilafat as we call this, uh, in India there was the Mughal Empire, of uh, Persia there was a Persian Empire from 2000 years. Now these were all Muslim dominated. So this order in the, this region, this order was the order which was shaped by the Muslim empires. Far east, the order was shaped by a Chinese empire. This was more or less the world order. In Europe in those days, they were small powers. There was not, there were no big power. There was one Roman empire, but that had disintegrated. That had lost its power. And there were many wars between various European countries and therefore, uh, they, none of them emerged, which it took some time when we'll come to it. So, if we are looking at 500 years or so, okay, the world order, or whatever was the world in those days, was shaped by China in the East and Muslim world in the rest of Asia and even to parts of Africa and, uh, and Europe. Okay, so, then, from medieval it started to change and started to change and then slowly this world order which was shaped by the Muslim empires was weakening. It became weak and weak and weak and there was a rise of the European power. Now this event uh, generally it happened around end of the 15th century or the beginning of the 16th century. But the reason is again very interesting. The reason is that in 1453, 1453, the Turks came and conquered Constantinople, today's Istanbul. Now, Istanbul was part of the Roman Empire which had broken up and this was called the Ro Holy Roman Empire. So when the Muslim power, the Turks conquered Constantinople and they called it now Istanbul, then the European powers receded and what happened? They lost the war but there is something else which they gained. That is the rise of the European power. Now what did they gain? The people of knowledge who had gathered because Constantinople was a big major center of learning, of knowledge, of the skills of every. They moved out. Mostly they were Christians. They moved out. Dispersed to European countries. And then the Renaissance, the the rebirth of knowledge in Europe took place. Among the major events, now this is shaping a new world order. That is why this is important. One of the factors which shaped or shifted power into hands of Europeans was the printing press, which was the late 15th, 15th century in Germany. And then the knowledge which the, the old uh, Osmania Khilafah uh, for about six, seven hundred years 
they had transferred Greek from Greece, from China, from all over the world into Arabic. And now this knowledge was then re-transferred from Arabic to Italian, to, to Latin, to English, to French, to others. So the knowledge shifted to Europe. And how did uh, it affect? It affected then the rise of the, it started to build up. And what was the signature or sign that the world order is now shifting away from Muslim hands and into European hands? Let us say two major events that we can say. In 1492, Columbus went and discovered America. And in 1498, Vasco de Gama from Portugal came and arrived here in India. Now this is the end of the 15th century and we could see that the Europeans had acquired this knowledge, navigation, world maps, compass and therefore they were able to master the seas and from there one went to America and the other arrived in India and now begins the rise of the European power and the world order is shaped by Europe. Let's take a break. Welcome back. Shah Sahib, you gave us a very good explanation or a good background about till end of 15th century. Now, how the medieval order changed into the modern order and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay, so now we, we, we realize, we see this, that the, the world order which was shaped until then by Asian powers, including Muslim powers, now that war, that power started to weaken and there is the rise of the European power and they are shaping the new world order starting from 15th and 16th century onwards. And the sign of the change were these two big things. From uh, Columbus, then he went from uh, Spain and arrived and discovered the new America. world of America. And from Portugal, Portugal came Vasco de Gama around African coast and he arrived in Surat, India, and discovered India. And discovered in terms of, they existed before, but uh, for Europeans, this was, you know, a new world. They had not, they had just heard that there is an India, and it was famous for uh, textiles and for, uh, for spices. Uh, but they had not seen and how to reach it. Similarly, about the, about the Americans, Americas. Okay, so now we see that the world order was earlier shaped by Asian powers. Now the world order is being shaped by European powers. From 16th to 17th centuries, it, it continued. Now it's very interesting, uh, and this is slow. Again, the, what are the other thing that should be noted is that as I said earlier, the world was not so well connected. The means of communications were very slow by ships which would take years or by camels or by horses. So, you know, the, the interconnectivity was very poor, very slow. Uh, therefore, every change would take long time. This change also, it took a couple of hundred years the decline of the Muslim power and the rise of the European power, they were shaping the world. So, as how were they shaping the world? Well, as we first said, okay, one went from Spain, Christopher Columbus, went, uh, discovered America, and then went on. So, 
the rest of this, in fact, South America became more or less controlled by, by Spain because Columbus had gone from, he was an Italian, but it was the Spanish power, the Spanish uh, king uh, and the queen who had sent him. So here is now the Southern American is now that world order of, of those countries is now shaped by Spain. Portugal came here uh, to India, Goa for instance, that is where they set up their, uh, their first base. But then over a period of time they were European wars uh, and then the Dutch Netherlands, they also went into say uh, Indonesia for instance, mostly that's where they went. But the, in, in the internal wars between Europe, the dominant power that emerged was Britain. There were British wars against Spain and other uh, European powers and finally the uh, Britain became the dominant U European power and was able to establish, let us say, a world order of its own for most of the country, most of Africa, parts of Asia, India, Burma, Malaysia, and even one or two other countries under Middle East, they were under the influence, either direct or indirect. So the world order was shaped by European powers in 16th, 17th onwards, and then it came into full bloom in the 18th and the 19th centuries. Now, it's very interesting that, uh, for instance, we talk about India. Even though the decline of the Muslim power, or let us say we talk about India now, of the Mughal power had started after the death of Aurangzeb. Uh, because then there were a lot of fights among themselves, and that's another chapter, chapter altogether. But even when the Muslim power declined in India. India was very rich as, as I said earlier that for a thousand years Asian powers had dominated and they had more or less set up the world order according to their likes and preferences. What had happened therefore for those centuries was that most of the wealth of the world was concentrated in China and in India. About 50% of the wealth of the world was in two countries, about 25% in China, 25% in India, and about 10% or 12% in the rest of Asia, Middle East, uh, Southeast Asia. So Asia at that time controlled 60% of the world GDP. That is the right, that is when the Asian dominance, when Asia was shaping the world power or the world order. Uh, interestingly, as European power rose, as uh, and for instance, uh, when India uh, started to become uh, colonized by, by East India Company, uh, one figure can be very interesting for our viewers. At that time, the wealth of India, as I said, about 25% of the world GDP in mid-18th century was concentrated in India. That is where the wealth was being created. And that wealth from India was equal to the wealth being created in UK, in Britain, in France, in Germany, and in the United States, those 13 colonies. All four put together were less wealthy than India. But India was losing uh, in technologies, in military power, in organizations, 
in knowledge and in skills and this is why even though they were rich but they were losing so we see that about 18th and 19th century this Europeans now they were shaping they, they were shaping the the American continent Britain was sh and France they were shaping the North America and Spain was shaping the South America and the Asian mostly Asia and Africa again it was uh, Britain in Africa partly France and uh, and the Dutch and the Netherlands now this is now we are coming almost to the end of the uh, 19th century and beginning of the 20th century now what do we see how is the world order shaped the world order is shaped in, in this way there are European powers Britain the most prominent of them or most powerful of them but then they were French and they were Dutch three over there then there was uh, China the Chinese power in some way even though it had declined there was Japanese power even though it had declined but then another power had risen in in the last 200 or 300 years which was R Russia under Tsarist Empire they had conquered many other countries of Central Asia Tajikistan, Samarkand, Bukhara, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan and some East European country now they had become this area was then the world order was shaped by Russia in that part of the world the rest of Asia it was shaped by uh, UK or Britain Middle East was shaped by Ottoman Empire Turkey was still there Turkey now what does it say what it says is that there were three or four major powers which had influence over different areas and they were dictating shipping the, the order in those areas so as we move into the 20th century now we'll, we will find that the world was a multipolar world as we come into the 20th century by now there were four or five major powers who had their own spheres of influence or direct or indirect and they were shaping our, the, the, the world order within those countries and keeping a, a sense of political stability UK or Britain was keeping political stability within the countries over which it had control or influence Russia shaping over its own areas Ottoman Empire in its own area so this was a multipolar world as the 20th century started and now we will see how this multipolar world has changed in the current situation let's take a break Welcome back. Shah Saab, you discussed the, in the in, with the start of 20th century, it is started with multipolar world. Okay. Now, how this new world order has been shaping through this period? Okay. Okay. Now, we, we start with the, uh, the 20th century. We, we said that at the beginning of the 20th century they were about you know four at least major powers who were keeping political stability within their own spheres of influence and then it as, as we are saying uh, there are many those three factors they always shape the the changing uh, orders of the of the world order 
the economic factor, the military factor, the cultural factor. Now we see that as the 20th century started on, the European countries for economic and military purposes, they fought wars among themselves. What is called the First World War and then the Second World War. Now wars have this tendency of either destroying a particular world order or shaping a new world order. Military uh, wars, conflicts, they've always played a very important role. Now these two major wars happened in, uh, in Europe, World War I and World War II. When the two wars ended, the multipolar world had disappeared. It became victim of the wars. The Britain, which was a big power, probably the largest at that time, most powerful, was no more such a power. Ottoman Empire, which was a huge big power, at the beginning of the 20th century, was no more the power. America, which was not an important power on the world scene, had suddenly emerged on the world scene. Now, new power had emerged, which was the United States of America, for the first time on world stage, from a regional to a world power. And the Britain, which was a world power for 200 years, disappeared. The Ottoman Empire, which was major world power for 200, 300 years, also disappeared. And the Russia, which had now become a communist country, Soviet Union, that emerged from the war as the other major power. So the two, the result of the wars was that instead of four major powers, now we had two world powers and each one was shaping the political stability within their own, own spheres of own sphere of influence america in europe in uh, south america and also in parts of asia soviet union in east europe and in communist bloc countries at that time, China was a weak country. Japan had emerged, but Japan was uh, still a regional power and not a world power in that way. So, 20th century and 50 years, at the beginning it had four major powers. It was a multipolar world. After 50 years and two wars, it became a bipolar world. Two poor worlds. Now, this brought some stability, but then uh, instead of hot wars, the cold wars continued. And the cold wars was to, to, to weaken your enemy or your opponent without a fight, without waging war, how to weaken economically, diplomatically, culturally. In, in different ways. And the two wars they were going on between one bloc led by America and the other led by Soviet Union. And the American bloc finally succeeded in Cold War in disintegrating the Soviet Union economically, militarily, culturally, media-wise, in many soft instruments instead of fighting with guns and battles and tanks and, and planes. In, in the soft Cold War, the America, an American bloc defeated the Soviet Union, which disintegrated in 91. And after 91, mm -hmm. it from bipolar world, it became a unipolar world. Now it's very interesting. We saw so many changes in the 20th century. 20th century started with four major powers, a multipolar world. After 50 years, it became a 
two powers, a bipolar world. After another 40 years or so, at the end of the 20th century, it became a unipolar world laid by America. Okay? Now, two things are happening. We saw that in the old days, in the medieval days, the empires of a particular world order shaped by whether China uh, or Mughal empires or uh, Persian empire or the British empire, it lasted two, three, four hundred years. But as the technology increased, as the connectivity increased between people, between countries, movement started more frequently and people could come and go quite quickly and the technology increased. So the change which was earlier taking place in 200 or 300 years, one change in 300 years or in 400 years, now in 100 years of 20th century, we saw three major changes. Multipolar world one and the bipolar came up. The bipolar went up, unipolar world came up. Within 100 years, three major world orders changed. Now the technology was there and the movements are there and interconnectivity was there. Now, how did this, how long has this unipolar world of America lasted? Now that is where we want to talk about how this new world order is shaping up today. Now, this unipolar world, let us say, as we talk today, is about 30 years old, from 91, and we are now talking in 2023, so, you know, about 30, 34 years. But this has been the shortest period for a world order to stay in, in existence. Instead of 200 years or 300 years or even 50 years, this American power is being eroded as weakened and an alternative new world order is shaping up within 30 years of creation of a unipolar world. Now why is it happening? Why there is a quick change? Why is American power weakening in such a short time? A number of factors. One, for instance, the, when the unipolar world, the American power became supreme, no other power could compete. It started into creating many wars. Much of the, you know, America's instead of goodwill or a, a soft influence expanding it, it, it used that unipolar war, war power into wars and conflicts. There was war in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Libya, in Syria and in other countries. Now, so the, the finance and military power was money was used into wars and they were wasted away and it created an anti-American feeling in many countries. When you go to war, you may win the war, but people become anti-you. So one was that these too many wars were fought by America, so that created a little problem. Second, the, the technologies and the the, the instruments of power that had given such strength, the economic strength, technological and military strength, but also now acquired by Asian powers. So they were also rising while America was wasting uh, its energies in fighting wars. And then there was a big uh, financial crisis, uh, 2007. 2000 for two two years 2007 to 9 the major financial crisis over there in the United States for instance it weakened American power a third then America used the dollar as an instrument to punish its opponents 
American economic sanctions and refusing uh, the dollar payments to various countries, especially the Russia and China. What happened is that these two, three factors, they contributed, accelerated the process to create an alternative world. And the sign of that alternative world is the setting up of BRICS. It started with five countries, mainly Russia, China, India, uh, and South Africa and Brazil. And now six countries have been added. It's now 11 countries. That is emerging as another alternative world power. So as we now say, what is the new world order shaping up? What we see is the decline of a unipolar world and the rise of a, another multipolar world. Now, as we have seen, these changes do not take place peacefully. They are generally associated with wars, whether hot wars or cold wars. What is important is to see is whether this new world order will be created in a peaceful manner or is the world going to see more wars only after wars can a new alternative world order come. So a big tussle is going on between an established power and an emerging power. The world has to see how this new world order comes, whether peacefully or after through some bloody wars. My viewers.